Hey everyone, welcome to the video today. We are going to be installing a Cortex 3-wire device on this 2014 Hino box truck. We're going to start on the passenger side by removing our fuse panel cover. Simply pulls right off. Set this aside. We're now going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the panel on where we're going to mount our device under. I think we're going to mount our unit right here. We're now going to use our digital multimeter to find the vehicle's constant and ignition wires. The red and the white wires on our tracking unit. Red will be constant, white will be ignition. So we're going to start out by grounding our multimeter. Then we're going to probe our suspected wiring location. So I'm going to start on this plug here and look for constant. We're going to find our 12 volt constant wire now. So I am going to probe this wire here. Uh, if you don't know which wire it is, I'd recommend actually back probing this connector instead of using a piercing probe. Um, but you'll see we have 12 volts here. You go ahead, turn the on position, crank it. See the voltage dip a little bit, but it shouldn't drop below nine. So yeah, 12 volts in all our key positions. This will be our 12 volt constant wire. So now I've got our suspected ignition wire tagged right here. You see the key in the off position. We have no voltage. We're going to go ahead and turn it to accessory. No voltage. On position, we have 12 volts. And we'll notice that that wire does not drop below 10 volts when we crank, so we know it's a true ignition wire. So now that we have our wires tagged, it's time to prep our harness. So we've got our 12 volt wire and our ignition wire. Basically, because both wires are next to each other, I'm just going to mechanically twist these wires together. That'll make the harness a little more, a little more neat, right? and we won't have any loose wires. So that looks about right there. Then what we're gonna do is actually crimp on a ring terminal to our ground wire. So I'm going to go ahead and take off a little insulation, twist our wire together, go ahead, slide our ring terminal on here, like so, take our wire crimping tool, just get a nice crimp there, pull test it, make sure it's on there good, that's it. Now these are our two unused input output wires uh, the blue is for pto brown is for driver id which we're not using on this install uh, so we're simply just going to stagger cut them and then uh, tape them off to the side so take a little tape here There you go. So now you can see, got our ground wire and our 12 volt and ignition leads ready for install. Now, before we go any further with our install, we're going to want to take down the serial number or at least take a photo off the back of our unit. So that way, when we check our unit in online or call support to assign the vehicle, we know which tracking device went into which vehicle. So I've got the insulation on my wires stripped back, ready to go. Now to make my job a little easier, I'm gonna undo this plug. And that'll give me better access to my wires. I'm gonna take off a little bit of this insulation here as well, uh, just to give me access. So for this installation, I'm going to be using the poke and wrap, otherwise known as the military splice technique. Basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our automatic wire strippers Strip back the insulation, about an inch or so. We're going to take our pick tool, go right through the center of the wire, being careful not to short this pick tool out on anything metal. 
going to twist our wire lead. We're going to go right through the center of this wire here. Push down on the wire. And we're going to basically wrap the wire around that. Like so, and you can see when we tug on this, this wire is not coming loose at all. The next step is to insulate our electrical connection. So I'm going to be using some 3M electrical tape. Give yourself a little room on each end of the splice just to be safe. Basically uh, just tape around here. Like that. Now to complete our connection, we're gonna be taking a cable tie. We're gonna get one right on the center where we spliced our wire. And we're gonna put one on the end as a strain relief. And then I'm gonna take our flush cutters cut off our excess cable tie. Now we're gonna do the same thing for our ignition wire. So you can see now we've got both our 12 volt constant and our ignition wires integrated. Just gonna tape up this harness a little bit and then we'll plug everything back in and begin routing our wires. So now we're going to ground our unit. Um, We've got a ring terminal here. Uh, we're just going to find a good metal ground. So you can either use an existing metal bolt, uh, or we can take a self-tapping screw and a lock washer and go really, uh, really anywhere metal. It's totally your call. So now I've got my wires routed, and I'm using a couple of cable ties. I'm going to bring that right up here. I'm going to try and mount my unit right around this area. So you want to be nice and high in the dashboard with nothing but plastic above it as metal will obstruct your GPS signal. So what I've done is prepared our bracket by putting two cable ties through the bottom channel on here. We're now going to wrap these around a solid surface, could be an air vent or a metal support bar and get our bracket in place. So now that we've got our bracket nice and solid and in place, we're simply going to clip in our tracking unit here. And finally, I'm going to secure it with the two remaining cable tie channels. So now we've got our unit mounted very securely. Final step is just going to be taking care of our excess cabling. So I'm just going to bundle this up with some cable ties and we'll put our dashboard back together and begin our testing. So now our installation is completed. So just to recap, we have our wiring done down here at this plug for 12 volts constant and ignition. We've got our ground on this ring terminal here. We've got our unit mounted on this metal support bar, nice and secure, and we've got our excess slack tied off here. So now we're going to begin testing our unit. First of all, we're going to put the key to the on position, and now we should see the LED lights on our unit start to blink. The one on the left is for GPS, the one on the right is for data. They're going to start off by blinking fast, and then once they slow down, that will mean a signal is acquired. But right now, we can definitely verify that we've got power going to our unit, and uh, we'll just wait for the signal acquisition. Our signal is acquired. We're going to go ahead and put our dashboard back together now, and then test our unit online or by calling to support. Now that we have our device installed, we're going to go to our unit health check utility. I'll have a link for that in the description. From there, we'll enter our unit serial number and check number, and then click check unit. Here, we just want to make sure that the location is correct by looking at the crossroads, and then we'll see both an ignition on and an ignition off event, or whatever we do with the key at that time. From there, you can call in the unit and update the vehicle's assignment, and that's it.